Hey everybody, welcome back to Battle Ready Inc. So this week's match, I used Green Sarismon finally. Uh, I didn't use any kind of like weird, tricky aggro tricks or nothing like that this time. Uh, this was like straight Sarismon with some just like big beaters at the end, and it was a very interesting deck. Digisorption is very powerful okay like you can get into like some crate like level sixes if you go second depending on how much your memory your opponent gives you it doesn't take much you can get all the way to a level six pretty easily honestly i didn't have very much issue on uh, the several times i played it and uh yeah this deck is wild so if you haven't checked that match out definitely go do that but we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into this Also, don't forget this month's memory marker is uh, Sunomon. These things are amazing. So if you don't get them now, uh, you got about a week left. So make sure you get in on these guys. They are the best memory counters we've had yet. The, the eyes and the mouth is so adorable. This thing is just incredible. Uh, the fur is textured and like the whole thing is made out of clay. Great flat bottom, great for uh, memory markers. Uh, that's our uh, our Patreon. So make sure you get in there and join our Patreon. Those are all handmade by my wife. Okay, so jumping right into the deck profile here. Uh, I ran Argomon at four of. Honestly, I love Argomon. You know, even when BT4 drops, depending on the style of deck you're playing, Argomon still like really, really powerful. Just being able to get that free memory at the beginning of your turn, you know, combine that with a memory fixing tamer and now you're at four memory you can do a lot in green with four memory heck even if your opponent just passes it to you with whatever just getting an extra memory is just always incredible uh, especially if they're trying to memory choke you and now you're up to two or or, or if you, they give you two and then you can go up to three you know whatever argomon is just incredible so powerful getting all that one memory literally one memory in green is just like ridiculous you can do so much in this deck uh, and then we got the one Minomon here, uh, because like I said, this is an aggro deck, so uh, I like to get a little DP boost, uh, you know, where you can get it, so uh, the one Minomon there. Also, green with uh, Mimi, we just get to get so many babies out that you have to run the five, uh, and there's just no other, I would not run green and not run five if you're playing Mimi, just because you go through all of your digi eggs so fast. Uh, then we got the Goblimon. Goblimon is like such a staple, really. Uh, one, he is just adorable. Um, but the two play cost, you know, we love our two play cost vanillas. Uh, with, again, with BT4, you get less of these guys because the effects of rookies are just getting better and better. So vanillas are kind of just going away slowly as e after each set. But I like to still just at least keeping one full play set of vanillas. Just that two cost, you cannot beat that. Uh, but the zero cost, you know, when needed, because plenty of times I've had to evolve into a Goblimon turn one because that was the only rookie I had. Uh, next up, we have Agumon. Agumon is just incredible. If you're playing any sort of kind of like an aggro green deck where, you know, you're really trying to pierce over stuff, that sort of thing, uh, Agumon is just a must. That 1,000 DP is incredible. Um, with BT4, with all the Digi Burst, you might see less Agumons, perhaps. I don't know. I think he's still just kind of almost a staple, really, in, in any kind of green deck, just because he's amazing. Uh, next up, I do have the Aurora Mons in here. Uh, with Rookie Rush being so like prevalent right now, there's a lot of Volcanic Dramon going around. And uh, so I like the 5k because it avoids the Volcanics at least. Uh, it still dies to Alter S, but you know, a lot of things are going to die to Alter S at that point. Um, so Aurora Mon here, he, it's just our pretty much our only, you will only ever hard play this. I could never imagine Digivolving into this. Uh, but two cost drop, you know, love our two cost drops. Great way to pass turn with, you know, putting your, if you're at one, you know, put your opponent at one because it's that two cost. Just really nice. Also, two costs are really good in Digisorption decks because you can hard play these guys for two and then suspend them for your Digisorption. So either like this Argomon here, this Digisorption 2, essentially you get a body on field and a free Digivolve. So that's pretty good. In the higher stages, you get a body on field and a two cost body, but you save yourself, uh, you know, if it's a three, uh, three memory Digisorption, you know, you save yourself one memory by hard playing the uh, two cost first. So uh, love the two cost in this deck. Really, really see the benefit. Uh, only the one Terrier Mon. Uh, so memory fixer or memory gaining is just kind of popular 
in uh, at least in North America where I play. So there's so much blue and so much hammer spark. It's very very popular, uh, even in like Mega Zoo decks and that sort of thing. You know, they play the uh, the blue rookies, and so then they can run hammer spark and that sort of thing. And so Terrier Mon is just a great way to deal with that. I did only have the one. Uh, we'll talk about these ratios at the end and changes I would made would make. And uh, I think bumping the Terrier Mon at least up to one, and that puts our our rookies up to 12 instead of 11. Because uh, there was a few times where I felt like I could have used rookies, more rookies, but most of the time the 11 was okay. Uh, next up, we've got our level fours here. Only the three Gargomon. So I love one cost evolutions, first of all. One cost evolutions are great. Uh, this is an aggro centric deck, right? So we're using the Saris Mons to basically get up into other level sixes, and so then uh, so we can use our level six Argomon to punch for basically game. So you suspend all of your stuff to uh, get this like super beastly Argomon on field that can just swing for a whole bunch. And, uh, and so having a Gargomon underneath that to give him a little more DP because he's only at 11,000, so he needs a little bit of a pick-me-up. And uh, I think Gargomon's just a great way to get you there. Uh, that one cost evolution, even a five play cost, isn't the worst. Uh, then we have the level four Digisorption here, the Argomon. Digi's option two, so essentially, you know, you suspend another one or the one you digivolve on top of, and it becomes a zero cost. Uh, we'll talk more about this one later, but again, the, the focus of the deck was Sarismon. So with Sarismon, you can get away with this. I think going ahead, depending on the style of deck, without Sarismon, I wouldn't run this uh, because I'd just rather have a level, uh, a one cost level four, or one cost to evolve level four than this one because I don't want to suspend necessarily like for everything I'd rather suspend for a level five and you know to get that free memory because I mean essentially I mean I'm not saving myself that much if I ran a one cost evolution over this I'm losing out on one memory whereas this I'm, I'm saving out on zero I'm, I'm saving you know two memory but at the cost of a Digimon so but with Sarismon, suspending your opponent's Digimon doesn't matter. So that's the that's the point I want to make on this. Is he's great in a Sarismon deck because you can suspend your opponent's stuff to use these guys a whole bunch. Uh, but in a non-Sarismon deck, I wouldn't use this. Uh, we've got the the four blockers here. We got the four Woodmon. Uh, just at least at my locals, Rookie Rush. I play Rookie Rush every single week, so uh, Woodmon is really a must for sure. Uh, just a great blocker. This will definitely get swapped out for the one cost blocker though when we get the uh, the structure deck the starter decks Yeah, the one cost ev evolution is just so much better You're gonna lose that 1000 DP, but really the only time you're blocking with your blockers You're, you're putting them in there to stop rookie rush ultimately really uh, and, and you know that sort of stuff like you don't want your opponent to get free swings with with rookies Even if it's not a rookie rush deck, you don't want them to get free rookie swings So just having that 5k blocker accomplishes the same thing and you save a memory. So uh, that's my thoughts on uh, the new blockers uh, Then we got our level fives here. So I went with the rapid mon again, just like the Gargomon. Uh, we're here just to get some bonus DP because our level six Argomon is just trying to uh, swing for game and he needs all the help he can get so having a rapid mon in combination with a gargomon to get us up there because we need the the dp is yeah he's eleven thousand. so um you know you're gonna need at least two opponents suspended stuff just to match a uh, an omni mon so and that's with both of these rapid mon and gargomon so just keep that in mind uh, with again with BT4 referencing that again that's where we're heading very soon that's why I keep talking about it uh, stuff like this won't matter anymore because we're gonna get um, the Palmon that gives us jamming if we digi burst and get rid of her uh, then that Digimon gets jamming for the turn so then DP buffing like Rapidmon and Gargomon are completely irrelevant at that point so just FYI, the, the the DP buffing on green it will no longer really be necessarily necessary. That's one of the reasons I was talking about Agumon. Not really sure if he's going to stick around or not for BT4, just because of that. Uh, if you're running a piercing centric deck, sure, having DP buffs is going to matter. 
Um, next up, we have the Argomont and the Blossommon. So these are level five Digisorption threes here. Uh, essentially, Digisorption three, and you get zero cost instead of three evolution cost. These things are incredible. Okay, so even if you're not playing a Sarismon deck, I think these are really kind of a must include. You know, even in BT four uh, for level five spots, I think these guys are are great. Because, like I said, you can play a two-cost rookie, suspend that, and then digivolve into these, you know, for for zero. So you're taking these and making these essentially two-cost in a way, and adding a body to the field. Uh, if you combine that with other things, like in this deck we have the Argomon, so having suspended stuff on our field is very important. So that's why I, I go with that. If not, then essentially you could play a two-cost uh, level five here and get the same effect in a way but without the extra body on field also not even in those situations you can suspend itself just to get into something so i like suspending themselves to go into these and then going into the sarismon on top of this uh because it's just and then passing the turn like that you know things like that because uh that just kind of sets up my field for the following turns these things are great um just they're something you have to learn the timing of when to use these effects uh when to digisorption using these guys and also they combo great with sarismon so just having them available to suspend your opponent's stuff essentially so once you get onto the sarismon having more of these is great because uh, it's less about um saving memory and more about being able to suspend your opponent's stuff with the Sarismon uh, using these guys. So now you're getting level 5s and level 6s on field and even level 4s for less cost because you're suspending your opponent's stuff. So uh, just incredible. Also the Argomon, the Inheritable here. I do kind of forget about it mainly because this is a one of, so I don't get to use it every game. It just does not come up. I don't draw into this every game. There's just no way in a one of. Um, but when attacking, you may play one level three green Digimon from your hand, suspended without paying its memory cost. Uh, this is great, again, in combination with a uh, level six Argomon, because that's another suspended body on field to give us more swings. So that's kind of like the strategy here is to, like I said, Digisorption into things, get your whole field suspended, uh, except for like one other thing. Go into the Argomon, and Argomon swing for five security checks, and then you swing for game with the uh, with whatever else you have on field. All right, now we're going to go into our Megas here. We are we do have the four Sarismon. Like, most of the deck is themed around this. Like, we did play the aggro one without this, but uh, this is more of using Sarismon to set up and uh, get into things faster, right? You're using the Digisorption tactic to get into things faster than necessarily the aggro one that doesn't have that nice memory efficiency. So it's just a little bit different of a strategy. Also, it suspends stuff, so you, can't, you don't have to worry about blockers as much. Uh, or if you're running a piercing-centric deck, you can suspend the important stuff that you want to pierce over. So yeah, Sarismon, just incredible for that. Also, it has Digisorption in itself, so you can get it out for only a two cost for a, a level six. That's pretty good. Uh, so next is our kind of, uh, these are our flex spots on ratios on how you want to do this. Uh, so I've got the Boncho Stingmon, uh, just going to go ahead and say it right now. I wish I'd played it at a two of, uh, really, I didn't miss it a few times, but I wouldn't play it more than a two of cause you only realistically get one good shot out of a Boncho when you know your opponent has something either you can suspend yourself or is already suspended and they have, you know, and it meets the criteria of that 12,000 DP so that way you can trigger all these Boncho Stingmon effects. So that piercing is great. Uh, and like I said, they, you got to attack into something that has 12k. So now you can get that buff of 7,000 DP and security attack plus two. So now you're swinging at 16,000. You're you know, you're clearing over uh, Omnimon at this point, really. So you're clearing Omnimon with this, and you're getting essentially three security checks: the one regular and the plus two. So this thing is a beast. And BT4, I think he's going to stick around just as well. I think he's going to be really great. There's some really cool combos. Uh, when we get there, I will discuss it. Uh, in the next green deck profile, which will be for BT4. And, uh, and Boncho Stingmon really synergizes well with a lot of the decks that are coming in that. Um, there's multiple ways to play green. There's the OTK way, and then there's the piercing way. And both of them are great. I think he combos really well with the piercing, though. So stick around for Boncho. But yeah, a two of, just so I can always have one in hand and ready to go whenever the opportunity presents itself as a one of. Uh, you don't always have the, you know, the opportunity will present itself and you don't have it in hand because you only have it as a one of. 
Uh, we're going to step over this one right quick, and we're going to Mega Gargamon. He was just kind of a tech in here, really. Uh, if I got in a situation where I didn't have, like, another Mega, or I didn't have, like, a, a good strategy I could go into, but I needed to stun my opponent, uh, I could drop the Mega Gargamon, and I stun something that's, you know, pretty important. Um, also, your turn while your opponent has suspended Digimon in play, this uh, Digimon gains security type plus one. So, you know, you get two checks with him. That would, 11,000 DP isn't nothing too crazy, but we have so many DP buffers in this deck, you're guaranteed at least to have one suspended, right? If you're going through all this trouble here, there should be at least one suspended to uh, get your uh, Mega Gargamon off. As a four Digivolve cost, though, you're probably passing turn with this guy, so uh, you won't get to usually see the benefit of his effects until the following turn, which is kind of a shame. All right, going back, though, Argomon, so level six here. This is like our big, uh, you know, our big go-to, or this is our big player, right? So Digisorption three, so he's only a two cost level six, like big hardcore beater, which is great. So you don't necessarily need the Sarismon to get this really nasty combo out. So your turn for each of your other suspended Digimon, this Digimon gains security type plus one. So if you're digisorptioning to get into him, right? So say you you know got a decent board, wide board out. Uh, with this deck, you really do want to go wide, which is another reason I wanted to bump my rookie count up to 12 and not 11. Um, so you could literally digisorption all the way into this guy from a rookie. So with the, uh, the all the other Argomons before it, so you got the level four one that you can uh, digisorption into for free. You got the level five one, which you can digisorption into free, and then you can go to this guy, which you can digisorption in for two. So you can go from a rookie all the way to a six with only two memory, and with a memory fixing tamer, you'll you'll have it. You know, you'll have the mem uh, the memory needed. Uh, even if you don't have all those uh, digisorptions, uh, if you have say um, like a one cost level four evo you know you can do that even so then you only need a level five and we have uh five counts of these guys so you know you're setting up the play so you're not just like blowing these guys you know left and right that sort of thing so you can get some pretty crazy stuff if you want to if you go that route right i'm just saying that's just a hypothetical of getting into this guy really fast and you'll have at least let's see that's one digisorption two digisorption three digisorptions so you'll have at least three suspended digimon to stack with this guy so now you're swinging for four security checks uh that's pretty awesome it's very easily to get that other one so uh, whether you swing with something else and you know clear something out of the way that you suspended on your opponent's field whatever it may be you can get that last one all sorts of ways with this uh, with this combination so this was really cool um, I only had it as the two of but uh, honestly I think I could have bumped it up to a three of really uh, when I was going into this, I was thinking about combini combining it with Hidden Potential so I could get, get it for free, right? And essentially, you go from a rookie all the way to a level 6 for zero memory with Hidden Potential. Like, is that not mind-blowing Like to think about that you could literally go from a rookie all the way to a 6 for zero cost? So flooding your field with going super wide is very, very beneficial uh, with this. So having that kind of as like the linchpin for this whole build... I could have very, very easily bumped him up to a three and not felt too bad. Um, now, you're probably wondering, well, you keep talking about you're bumping all this stuff up. Well, I mean, what are you going to cut to do all these bumps that you're talking about? All right, so we're going to go on to our next last little bit. I had the Puppet Mons in here, and let me tell you, like, they felt like such a waste in this deck. It's so unnecessary. Like, Puppet Mon is phenomenal, right? It'd be absolutely incredible in a lot of decks. But he just doesn't synergize with this deck at all. I mean, sure, he's a green. I can go into him uh, for three memory and swing, get a, a memory back, but and you know get memory back every turn with him, which is kind of neat. But we already have so many. I mean, we're at eight right here with that. That's eleven megas. Essentially, you don't usually count Puppetmon in your mega count, though. Realistically, because he's always a hard cost. You're never gonna digivolve with him more than likely. Um, but yeah, I would just cut all the Puppet Mon, honestly. Just cut him down. I could bump each the, the Boncho and the Argomon up and uh, maybe drop the Mega Gargamon, honestly, and then bump that uh, that rookie up. So uh, then we'd be at 12 rookies. And uh, so yeah, that was my biggest regret was the Puppet Mon playing it this week. Um, definitely will not probably do that again. 
Uh, next up, we got the Mimi's. Mimi's is incredible. Our memory fixers are kind of a must, I would say, going forward. I, like, I've loved every time I incorporate a memory fixer in a deck that didn't previously have one, I instantly loved it. Uh, like Alter S, I wasn't running the tie that gives the plus one security. As soon as I put that in there, I felt so much better. And it was less even about just getting that security high plus one, but just getting the memory fixer. Like, that alone was just so worth it. Getting that bonus security attack was cool, too, when when I got to, you know, pull it off. But just the memory fixers alone is incredible. But Mimi, just getting that second raising phase is just incredible because you can pound through your eggs so fast that's more draws that's more bodies on field extra fast because you need those extra rookies on field to suspend for your digi's options and mimi just facilitates that so nicely uh we do have the four flower cannons i love flower cannon you know like i can't play a green deck without flower cannon uh one it's a bomb in in uh in security they hit this and it just suspends all their stuff oh Feels good every single time uh, Flower Cannon gets hit. Very rarely does it actually get hit when there's it's like the last swing, but sometimes it does happen, or uh, or it doesn't work on a blocker and then they kill you with a blocker for game. Just of course, naturally, you know it's the the last card in security instead of the second to last card. Just bad luck like that, but still incredible and a two cost is nothing i mean a two cost option especially in a green deck where you love suspending things so you can use your piercing to crash through it like with boncho boncho stingmon combos really well with flower cannon uh flower can also works really well with the argomon say if they have a blocker on field you can just flower cannon them away and then with your zero cost evolution argomon that you went all the way up into now you can swing for game with this massive argomon buff uh, because you got rid of their blocker because of flower cannon. Yeah, it's it's a great card. So definitely loving this at four of. Even in VT uh, four, definitely keeping it. Especially if I go with the piercing route, because you want ways to suspend your stuff. Unless you go with like the uh, digi bursting ways to suspend stuff, then you might cut this down to three. But even then, it's still it's still really good. So. Uh just to kind of depends on your builds in BT4, I guess, if you want to cut this down. But I wouldn't cut it less than two, even, no matter what the deck is. It's just, it's too good of a card. And then last, Hidden Potential. We've already talked about Hidden Potential and why it's here. If we could play more of it, you better believe we would. Um, just, this card is just such a blowout. Getting to put any Mega on field you want for free is just, like, you cannot. But, I mean, really. Like, is there anything better than that, getting a Mega on field for free? No. Especially if Mega's, like, this powerful. So yeah, if we could play this at more of, you better believe we would. Um, it's in BT4 though. I can see why it got banned because of the cards in BT4s. Uh, why this got uh, limited to one. Uh, for those of you who do not know that in Japan, uh, they were well into BT4 when the, the limited list came out for Hidden Potential as well as the uh, level 5 Argomon. It was because of BT4. Because of Nidhogg and because of Hercules Kabuterimon. Like... Uh, those don't have digisorption, so you have to pay these massive four memory, five memory for these digivolutions. You're pretty much always passing turn, but with hidden potential, you get to keep it on your turn. And uh, yeah, so you, th those are, especially after a blowout card like those can be, just to have it still your turn after bringing them out. Yikes. Um, but yeah, so hidden potential is just incredible. But you gotta really, you gotta make it work it. You gotta make it worth it, okay? So timing is, is key. Don't just blow it on the first level five or level six that comes to mind, especially something like Boncho. Boncho is only a three memory cost, anyways. Uh, Sarismon, you know, realistically, is only a two. Uh, Argomon is realistically only a two. Uh, the Mega Gargamon, it combos pretty well with. But again, I don't even know if this card is quite even necessary in this deck. So uh, you might not even really need to save it for a Mega Gargamon. It's just there to uh, facilitate those really special plays. If you can get a, a Cress uh, or a Sarismon out for free with Hidden Potential and then start using Sarismon to suspend all your opponent's stuff, ooh, that is so good. That is that is, that is where it's at right there. Is keep it on your turn with a Sarismon, and then so that way Sarismon can start using its effect to get all your Digivolves for free. Yeah, that's that's nasty for sure. So that's like the those are like the dream plays with that with this deck. Um, so that's the deck at least for uh, for 1.5. We're at the end of it here. We got a couple weeks left. Uh, not much though. What is it like? Three weeks to go? Two two and a half weeks? Something like that? What is it? Uh, three weeks. We got three weeks to go here. Um, so. I definitely plan on playing green in in bt4 some changes like i said 
uh, you could really adapt this for BT4 with the with the Nidhog. You'll change out your level fives for like the new level five that gives you the Digi Burst. That works really well, and you'll change out your rookies for the Digi Bursting for sure. Like the uh, the ones that really like combo off with the uh, the Digi Bursting ability will uh, definitely be good. And, uh, and probably some level 4s. Uh, I'll probably drop the Argomons. If I'm dropping the Ceres Mons, then I'd, Argomons is not good. I'd rather just have a 1 cost evolution for sure. And, uh, and the DP buffing isn't quite necessarily if you're getting the jamming. So uh, something else there. Definitely probably the whole level 4 lineup will change. Just because the Wood Mon will get changed out for the other blocker. That's just a little bit better uh, for uh, memory cost. And uh, But we'll, cut, we'll come back to that later at a later time though. Because... BT4 green is going to be like no other. I cannot wait. That is going to be incredible. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment uh, as well as subscribe if you haven't already. If you enjoy this type of content, I try to put it out as much as possible. So definitely subscribe. Also, if you really enjoyed the content, check out my uh, Patreon. I have a link in the description below for it. You can get access to my Discord server, as well as your, if you're a Dragon Village M fan, account takeovers where I help you out with your account. If you're a Digimon fan, I've got monthly giveaway. Well, not even giveaways. I've got monthly merch that's specific to Patreon. Stuff like memory counters custom made this is the uh, the baby form of vmon here there's gonna be more in the works also so lots of memory counters all kinds of awesome digimon merch so definitely check out that tier and if you're just all out crazy there's other tiers if you're that dedicated uh, as well as check out my teespring i've got awesome merch there you know official battle ready ink merch Awesome phone cases for you Digimon fans out there. Uh, they've got them for iPhones as well as uh, Samsungs. So they are super sweet. If you've seen the, the last Digimon movie, that's where these are from. I had a friend of mine custom make these so that way they fit perfectly on these phone cases. They look super good. So definitely check those out. But at the end of the day, if you can't do any of that, just like I said, like the video. That helps a ton. And subscribe. It doesn't hurt, but it helps me. So that's what's the, the real benefit. And as always, I'll see you next time.